Hey guys, this is Mark from Erickson Machine and Performance. I'm going to show you how we bore a two-stroke cylinder. This is a big bore Yamaha 701. So this cylinder is getting set up for Wasner 85 millimeter pistons. This is a forged piston. So we take the pistons, we measure them with a micrometer. Um, they're measured, you know, about half an inch from the base of the skirt. Get the numbers, write them all down so you can't make a mistake. Always double check. Take that number, we bring it over here. We set it onto the boring bars micrometer. So this is how we set the cutter. So now that we have all that set up, we can go to the machine and center this on the bore. So there's these feet on the boring bar. This is what centers inside the cylinder. The three feet expand out and push to center it. You then lock down the boring bar. When you do that, then you can bring the bar back up and start cutting. So we drop this down in the hole. We're going to open up the feet. There's a knob on top which does that. When the feet are open and the bar is centered, we lock down the locking bolt. We back the feet off and we bring it back up. Now that it's up, we're going to rotate this over so we can get to where the cutting head and micrometer goes in. So these cutters are actually made by a company, um, Beam Equipment. They make them for all different boring bars. They're great. It's an indexable cutter on a you know ground stick tool, basically. Um, I've used them on every boring bar I've owned. They're phenomenal. So we set these into the bar. They're actually spring-loaded on the quick way. The micrometer now goes in, which is preset. We make sure the tool is moving and actually touching the micrometer. When we have that, then we lock down the set screw. We then back the micrometer out. Close the dust cover, and then we drop the bar down right above the sleeve. So this is a ported cylinder, so the sleeve's shorter in the back. It's the way I port my cylinders personally. Um, I also drop the sleeves down, so there's a heavy interrupted cut until you get a good way down the bore. So we fire up the boring bar, we put it in gear, we're going to bore in low. And we start boring. These are LA sleeves in the cylinder. Uh, it's a nice hard sleeve. And that's how a cylinder gets bored. Now this will go all the way down. And then when it gets down to the bottom, I will reverse it all the way up. This bar is nice. It actually has a power feed back up where my other bar, which this is a Van Norman instead of a Quickway, also a phenomenal bar. Um, you have to hand crank it up instead. You can now hear the interrupted cut going through the exhaust port as it's dropping down. And now you can see the cutter is now lo no longer cutting. So what we'll do, we will reverse the bar, bring the cutting head out of the hole, Shut the bar off and we'll now get ready to move the bar over to the next hole. So now that the first hole's finished, we're going to stick a bore gauge in it. This is set to the size of the piston. We're going to come up, we're going to check it.
right there we are at zero which is perfect that's what we want and we're ready to rock and roll on the next hole now that we're over at the next hole we're going to take the cutter back out we will slide the bar back over the next bore Drop it in, open the feet to center it, and then we will lock it down. So it's locked down again. Back the feet back off. Raise the bar up. Slide the cutter back in. Slide the mic back in. Check that it's making contact. Tighten the cutter. Shut the dust cover. Bring it back down. Turn it on and repeat. Alright guys, so now we're out of the boring bar, we're in the honing machine. We're going to start off with our coarsest grit stone. We're going to check everything. That's zero, 0 on both holes. This is a forged piston setup, so we're going to end up going five and a half thousandths. We're going to do this in a couple steps. Um, several different grit stones to end up with the desired surface finish we're looking for. So we turn the hone on. Wait for the oil to fire up. Here we're going to check how much we removed on the first. So we removed two thousandths. These are LA sleeves, so they're harder than stock, so they end up squealing a little bit with the stones. It's normal. The harder the sleeve, sometimes you end up getting a slight squeal, which is actually the aluminum guide. Go ahead and lift this up and check it. Check where we're at. there as well. 
So now we're going to go to the next set of stones. These stones come out. Next set, which is a finer grit. The idea on this is as you go down, you end up with different grooves, you know, scratches basically in the cylinder, which trap oil um, and gives you the desired finish. By doing a multiple step process like this, the ring seats significantly quicker and you end up with better ring life um, and better piston ring sealing all together. Away so we can measure everything, see where we're at. Four, also four. So now we're going to take this out and I'm going to chamfer the ports before I finish honing it. Alright, so now that we're fairly close to size, we're going to deburr, chamfer the ports, that type of thing. Start off at the top of the sleeve. Chamfer the top edges. Then we will go in and start deburring everything. Chamfering the ports is one of the most important things on the two stroke. Making sure there's no sharp burrs that are going to end up snagging the piston. Now we got the last grit stone going in. Now the hand for my port before I'm finished is whenever you're grinding something, you're creating a burr. So if you cre create a burr and then you're finished, when the first time the piston rings come up and down, it's going to hit the burr you created from the chamfer, and you're going to send metal debris through your motor. So, by doing it this way, I do it in a multi-step process, which I design. I'm showing some of it, not all of it. Um, but by doing it that way, whatever small burr is left from chamfering it, I remove it in the last honing process and you still end up with a perfectly chamfered port. Um, you know, chamfering ports is almost an art form. Doing it right can really prolong the life of an engine um, and help with performance with airflow and stuff like that. Um, you know, like anything, you get what you pay for. Um, you know, skilled labor isn't cheap, cheap labor isn't skilled. Um, that's really been my motto all along. So I hope you liked this video. This basically showed you everything that goes into um, boring and honing a cylinder to size. Um, if you like it, please subscribe to the channel. 
like the video. I got a bunch of other cool videos coming up shortly for you guys to check out. I appreciate you checking us out.